You all right there, ladies and gents? How is it going? I'm out on the tow rag, my pretty Touareg 660, as you can see. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about Motorcycle Live, which is uh, a bike show in the UK. It's the main one in the UK that I've just got back from after uh, spending a couple of nights up in Birmingham or thereabouts Birmingham. So Motorcycle Live for me is a little bit of a tradition. Uh, I don't go up there just for the bikes. I go up there to hang out with my mate Matt, who uh, lives up in Chester and uh, we just don't get to see each other very often because life gets in the way of all that sort of stuff doesn't it so we normally get a hotel and uh, we'll uh, get out on the beers the night before have some good food and then uh, grab some sleep and head to the show in the morning and this time we stayed at the moxie hotel which is literally on the doorstep of the nec so we roll out of bed and uh, into the bike show which was fantastic a really good way of doing things and not too far from the restaurants there either uh, so it was all pretty pretty good um, yeah, normally we go to a different hotel a bit further away and that's a bit of a trek especially in november when the weather can be a bit rubbish um, thankfully the weather this time wasn't too awful um, it was mostly actually quite good except for when we left the uh, the show on the uh, Thursday afternoon. The NEC or Motorcycle Live bike show uh, gets a bit of stick these days uh, for being small and getting smaller and smaller and I can see sort of why people say that um, with uh, brands like Moto Guzzi, Aprilia and Vespa not showing up um, they're all under the Piaggio group so um, yeah it's, it's Piaggio group that's calling that one I think they're just saying it's not financially viable for them when they've got the Eichma show uh, a couple of weeks prior and I can kind of get that I kind of get that um, bike shows are expensive for these people to put on and all that but it is a real shame to have a, a manufacturer or two manufacturers of bikes that I have <laughs> <laughs> and they're not showing in, in the UK at any of the bike shows I go to. Uh, which, yeah, yeah, I think it's a pity. Especially when they have new bikes out. Uh, Moto Guzzi have got the V100 and that is a bike I'd love to see. Fortunately, I have spoken to my local dealership and they have uh, reserved me a spot to have a demo on one. I don't know how much of a, a demo it will be, how long they'll let me play with it. Because I'm imagining it's going to be a popular bike that they're going to have strict turnarounds on the time scales that people can borrow them for um, but hopefully I'll be able to get something for you from that that's by the by that's a, a different thing altogether but might get a review of the V100 on the channel soon but Motorcycle Live is a tradition for me like I say we go up with my mate Matt and uh, we we just enjoy ourselves we, we just have a good time because we make it a good time by well just drinking beers and doing bloke things like poking motorcycles whereas if you just go up for the day I can imagine that it's a little less fun because you're traipsing around and all that sort of stuff and you've probably already had a stressful drive up there and all that sort of shin has and then you've got to drive back afterwards and if you bought stuff you're probably carrying stuff halfway across the world to the car park that they've put you in and uh, as people have rightly pointed out the car parking is quite expensive up there for, for, for really something that could be included in the ticket price maybe it's glorious up here I can't believe they put this fence here ruined it <laughs> but obviously uh, what I want to do up at the bike show is possibly different from what you'd want to do uh, and you might have different opinions on whether it's good value or not I certainly find it good value just because it, it's it's bonding time for me and one of my closest mates um, yeah it's, it, it's fantastic for me but what's important here in this video is uh, what the bike show had had to offer that excited me and uh, made me happy and all that sort of thing. Now there have been quite a few new motorcycles out recently. Um, Eichmer obviously having just happened and all the main manufacturers showing us their offerings down there. And a few of them made it up to Motorcycle Live to let us see what they've got. And it was quite cool, it was quite nice to see some of the new stuff. But a lot of the bikes that are out and the new ones, they just don't float my boat, they don't do anything for me. Uh, Honda have got the, is it Transalp isn't it, the 750 engine. Whereas I've got this Aprilia, which does everything I want it to do, probably better than that would. Um, I certainly, I feel like this is a better bike for the dual sporting that I do, the off-roading and all that sort of stuff. So that really didn't float my boat and uh, the stand was heaving with loads of people wanting to poke and prod them at new bike which is understandable because I'm sure it is going to be an incredibly popular motorcycle. 
uh, as will the new 500 rebel that's not a rebel it's a scrambler that's stupid um, but other people will like that um, but not me <laughs> Uh, so uh, the Honda stand didn't really offer me very much. Uh, Suzuki was cool, uh, it was nice seeing some of their new bikes, but again they don't really do anything for me. Uh, they, I don't look at Suzuki and go, oh there's a future bike. We did spend a lot of time on the Kawasaki stands. Um, my mate Matt, he's a Kawasaki fan and he's looking at um, maybe in a, in a year or so um, getting the Kawasaki, is it, I think it's the uh, SX1000 or whatever it's basically the old Z1000 touring version so it would come with uh, panniers and all that sort of stuff and that is a cracking motorcycle and it is a, a lot of bike for the money I know a lot of people complain about how much motorcycles cost these days but actually that's just what they cost so you've got to face the fact that that's what they cost so therefore when you look at what you get on the Kawasaki compared to a lot of other bikes it is it's, it's good value for money compared to them maybe um, I certainly didn't think it was excessively expensive. Then you've got the Yamaha stand and they've got a lot of oh, fantastic motorcycles. I, I'm a fan of the T7, it just doesn't fit me without lowering it and then it destroys its ability. So it's not really a bike that I care for, although I do care about it as a whole because I want manufacturers to make more bikes like this and the T7 that are accessible to people with shorter legs like me which is ultimately why I've got the Aprilia because the T7 was just too big. Yeah, I also have the R7 which is a bike that I love the idea of, I, I, I really do. When I, that first got announced I was like, oh yeah, I'm all, all interested in that for sure. Um, and yeah, it's only got 70 horsepower or whatever it is, uh, but that doesn't matter. I mean, how much fun do I have on my Motoguzzi V7? And that's uh, barely got 50, it hasn't got 50. <laughs> Um, so it's not about the power, what you want is a bike that you can flip around and uh, get around all the country road corners and all that sort of stuff and it is very very much going to be capable of doing that I can assure you, a little the semi scalpel that is. And yeah the Aprilia RS660 is a smaller engine, same configuration effectively um, but has 100 horsepower but it shouldn't be about willy waving about that although it would be interesting to see how the R7 does versus the Aprilia in racing with the uh, Mini Twins and Super Twins I don't think the Aprilia can go in Mini Twins I think it's too powerful for it uh, I'm not sure on the rules um, but certainly in the Super Twins you would see them both go up against each other obviously the uh, Yamaha will need a bit of tweaking to get it a little bit more, more, more powerful to make it competitive uh, but yes, it's, a, it's an exciting class and I think on the road it's actually a, a, a cracking idea to have um, these lower powered sports bikes that you can actually enjoy without getting stupid, without getting too illegal so you're not going to um, feel the wrath of the police quite so much if you get caught doing something naughty because whatever stuff you're doing won't be as naughty because they're slower. <laughs> Oh, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. But there's far more usable than these 200 odd horsepower machines that you've got to be uh, Marco Marquez or Pedrosa or whatever to be able to ride them because they're just obscene amounts of, of power that need all the technology. Uh, yeah, it's nice that these smaller bikes have got some of the tech, um, but you, you need it on the big bikes just to keep them tame, don't you? But that Yamaha R7 is a cracking little bike. I, I, if I was in the market for a sporty bike, I would probably consider that, certainly consider the uh, Aprilia RS660 um, but yeah the R7 is, is gorgeous to look at uh, yeah, yeah yeah it's cracking they've done a lovely job with that bike I think so that's the main four isn't it Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha and Honda covered in the things that were my interest on those stands I, not much from many of them except for really the Yamaha uh, then uh, oh actually with the Kawasaki stand uh, you've got that um, a hybrid motorcycle and uh, I'm all for trying stuff I think it's a good idea I mean like they did the supercharger thing didn't they so uh, they are thinking outside the box which is good but it is quite a long motorcycle maybe the paintwork doesn't help it um, look less long <laughs> Uh, but it, it, it is quite a long motorcycle and it'll be interesting to see if that turns into a thing and if it stays looking like that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's an interesting concept. Well done Kawasaki for, uh, for
for thinking outside the box. I mean, I think it's important at this day and age, although with the internal combustion engine being a dying dinosaur, is there really any worth, any value in um, coming up with new engine designs for something that you're gonna have to kill in 10 years time? Well, who knows, who knows? All to be seen, isn't it? I mean, it might all change. I hope it does, I really do. Next up, we have got the Triumph stand, which I, Really, I do count Triumph as uh, as much of a, a main manufacturer, one of the big ones, as any of the Japanese ones. But everyone always sort of thinks of motorcycles in Japan, don't they? Really, um, when it comes to mainstream motorcycles. So um, yeah, Triumph—they've got a cracking lineup at the moment. I'm not really that interested in all their scramblers and all that sort of stuff. What I was mainly interested in was seeing the new colours for the 765 RS, which the red looks amazing it really does it's a it's a color they've used on the speed triple rr the 1200 rr i think it's the same color as that and it is absolutely gorgeous the speed triple rr doesn't interest me i think it, it it's a weird looking thing it's just not my cup of tea um but yes it's it's fantastic to see that triumph had listened to uh, the people <laughs> and have come up with some bolder colours and uh, we're going to talk about some bold colours in a second with a Moto2 uh, but the uh, the 765 is, is cracking and that red is is a beautiful colour it's less restrained than um, their previous colourways on that bike um, but it is still very conservative and posh and stuff like that whereas uh, I like brash I like something that's a little in your face what I was really hoping to see up at the Triumph stand at the show was the new yellow uh, Street Triple 765 RS uh, it's a, a again it's a gloss paint like the red is uh, but um, obviously a, a bit bolder and uh, brighter and stuff um, but unfortunately they didn't have it there so I couldn't really say whether I like it or not um, but in the stock images they have on the Triumph website uh, I think it looks grand I think the contrast between that and the black of the other parts of the bike uh, make it look like Bumblebee in motorcycle form um, from the Transformers and all that I, I, I just think it's a beautiful looking bike so I can't wait to see one of them in the flesh and I was disappointed to um, find that they hadn't brought it up to the show with them uh, but it, it's not the end of the world it's not the end of the world I'm not after a 765 anyway I'm not after a 765 I've had one but I am very much commending Triumph on their effort and on their listening to us to have bought us those two colour options with the uh, with the RS um, uh, well done um, the, the, the showstopper up there on the Triumph stand was the 765 Moto2 limited edition bike wowzers uh, I wanted them to bring bold colours to the to the table and boy have they done that uh, man it's the 80s all over again that is proper fluoro yellow that is it's uh, yeah, it's not high vis it's in your face mother beeper <laughs> it's um yeah it's ugh. it's an incredible incredible colour scheme very bold very brave and absolutely clap my hands to you Triumph that's um, that's more of that please more of that but not on the limited edition bikes uh, um, we want yeah, your tango orange and lime greens and all that sort of stuff that's what we want in gloss in gloss please thank you <laughs> like I say the Triumph stand was the main one I really wanted to spend some time on and the uh, the next bike there that floats my boat that tickles my pickle and all that sort of stuff is the uh, 1200 speed triple RS I think it's a phenomenal motorcycle I can't wait to get a demo on one at some point I very nearly bought one as soon as it got launched uh, but uh, the dealership at the time never got back to me and um, yeah I, I, I tend to appreciate people contacting me if they want to sell me a motorcycle when I've asked them to millions of times <laughs> Um, but yeah, they lost out of a sale there, um, not the end of the world. I hope that actually that works in my favour and uh, Triumph will move some of the bold colours that they're doing on the 765 up to the 1200 and uh, give us um, some, some lovely, lovely colours for that as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. So we're looking at sort of 2024 bikes for that, really, because the 2023 colours have already been announced and, and they haven't got any for it there. I really don't like the um, uh, copper colour that they've got on the Speed Triple. I don't like matte paint. I like gloss paint. Um, and I like metallic-y, sparkly bits. And I, I want it to be shiny and all that sort of stuff. And unfortunately, uh, they're, 
matt just doesn't doesn't do that for me it doesn't and i'm not quite sure that it's the right orange anyway but yeah um if triumph are listening which i doubt uh, a lime green gloss with sparkles <laughs> that would be lovely thank you <laughs> i can't afford it at the moment so i'm quite glad that it's uh, not going to be till 2024 because uh, that gives me some time to save some pennies but uh, i think if i was to buy any motorbike that's out at the moment it would probably be a speed triple if they could sort the colorings out which they can't but anyway here's a picture of it in lime green do this drive do this <laughs> yeah okay so that's the main ones the important ones from the bike show i think um the ones that you're going to be interested in my thoughts on i suppose uh yeah if that's what i'm doing here something that's probably a little bit um uh segue or whatever you call it um out there which you might not be expecting from me is i also spent a little bit of time on the harley davidson sand uh, to you some of it might be hardly made it some uh, to me I'm, i respect every bike i love bike um yeah bike's a bike it's all good it's all good baby i like motorcycles and uh, i've always had a little soft spot for the harley davidsons uh, but they are rich man's toys unfortunately and not many people can really afford them which means not many people can relate to them these days i think it's um i was speaking to maca jerica who's a diehard harley davidson guy and he's sort of, of the same sort of opinion it's uh, it's a dead thing for um videos at least the people that ride harleys don't tend to watch youtube i suppose <laughs> two of the bikes there um strike a little a bit of appeal in me the first one being the uh, fat bob it's kind of an aggressive more modern looking take on the harley davidson um, i think it's a cracking looking bike and i was quite surprised to find that even with the forward controls on it it did sort of fit me uh, but the ergos i didn't quite like uh, i didn't like the fact that you literally resting your foot on the exhaust pipe as it comes out of the big engine um, yeah so there was things there that i was just like yeah i don't think that would work for me because of me being shorter stature i think if i was bigger then i could hold my legs out a bit more and stuff but i'm not i'm, I'm me I'm, I'm a dinky person <laughs> uh, and it's uh yeah that's a shame because that one's a bit cheaper than the other one um yeah the the, the, the fat bob is a, is, a, is a cracking bike with a 114 engine it's it, it's going to be quite quick um as far as harley davidson's go but the one that i sat on and liked and i looked at it and i pondered and stuff and i thought if i was going to go harley davidson ever in my life would i go for one at all or would uh, this one be it and the one that would be it is the fat boy uh it's more sort of classically styled it's an armchair it is so so comfortable um yeah i sat in that chair on the seat on it chair <laughs> i sat in the seat on it um and uh, i was like oh all right okay um yeah this is more comfortable than my sofa <laughs> and i could reach all the controls on it and it looked lovely and if i was the sort of person that cleaned motorcycles regularly sorry aprilia i will clean you soon i will clean you soon i promise <laughs> um yeah i, I mean it, it, it's the sort of bike that you do keep clean isn't it you don't buy a harley and have a dirty one unless you're buying an older rattier one and stuff um, and that's not where i'm going but it was a uh, cracking little motorcycle i say little it's huge um and i was very quite very smitten with it i thought yes yes i could see myself on one of these um if i had twenty-three thousand pounds which i don't i mean i can't afford the triumph and that's 15 and a half grand i think they are um so adding on another eight thousand pounds <laughs> that's a lot a lot of money it's a lot a lot of money and uh, yeah it's a lottery win it would have to be a lottery win for me to be able to afford one of those and to uh, justify to uh, my bank account so that really is uh, my thoughts on the bikes up at the show the ones that interest me intrigued me and make me happy and smile and warm fuzzy on the inside I imagine the Harley Davidson is something that's a bit of a surprise to a few of you. Um, maybe not a surprise to some of you. I know uh, one of my friends, he gets very angry when I mention liking Harley Davidsons. Um, but my, my thoughts are it's my money, my toys, my bike. Um, and I like bike. And Harley Davidson is bike. As is Pretty Tuareg. As is Moriguchi V7. As is Honda C90. I just like bike. As far as how value for money the NEC, the Motorcycle Live Show, was for me, um, for me it was outstanding value for money because, like I said at the start of this video, it's more for me about hanging around with uh, a mate and just 
just enjoying the company of one of my closest friends um, and the bike side of it is a bonus it just is is the thing we have in common we like motorcycle do i recommend going to motorcycle live um, for a day visitor i don't not recommend it i don't not recommend it uh, but I, I do think you've just got to work out what it is that you want from the show if you're going up there to grab some bargains those days have gone the reason you used to go to the show 20 years ago or well more than 20 years ago is because the internet wasn't there you didn't have shops like sports bike shop um, with all their fantastic free returns and all that sort of stuff you didn't have the internet keeping the costs of everything down because they're they're not paying for shop fronts and stuff like they had to in the past um, yeah it's most cycling has changed it's changed a lot and it's not a bad thing it's just a different thing and it just means that the people that are a bit old school and want to go off to the bike show and get themselves some deals on some leathers well you can still do that I mean I bought this rucker suit up there a couple of years back um, so you can do that but there's no real point because you can do that online now uh, but if you want to just go up there and point it and poke it and sit on some of the newest latest greatest machinery and you don't mind it not being all the newest latest greatest machinery Piaggio please come back <laughs> and then uh, yeah it's good value for money I mean what's, what's the ticket is it 27 quid or something like that 29 quid for the ticket which is a lot for some people it is a lot um, and then parking is a rip-off unless you go on a motorcycle or on a motorcycle it is free but yeah yeah well I think if you don't pre-book your, your parking up there it's 17 quid for the day which is disgusting uh, but if you do it like we do then we were paying 10 quid a day and even though we were there two nights because we weren't there beyond 48 hours um, we didn't have to pay three days parking so um, for us we paid uh, just over 20 quid parking each and yeah I don't think that's unreasonable really not when you think about it because it is premium real estate there if motorcycle live is a thing that you went to do let me know below let me know your highlights of uh, what it was that you saw there and if that tickled your pickle and all that sort of stuff um, and floated your boat and made you all happy and warm and fuzzy inside i'd love hearing what made you moist um if you didn't go and you don't go because you're like a, an objector to um how the show is these days with the, the cost of it uh, then let me know why that is because you might be picking up on something that i haven't even considered which is why i still find it value for money Alrighty looks like we're moving so um uh yes if you haven't done so already click the subscribe button it'll be lovely having you come back for some more normally you'll find me this time of year riding either this bike or my b2 enduro bike on some green lanes on my videos um but you will also find me on some tarmac stuff as well i've got a gsx r750 uh, a moto good tv7 and a honda cb100 as well um so all sorts of content on the channel from those bikes uh, so if you've only found me through this video do check out my other content and uh, like i said give us a subscribe that would be brilliant if you like this video why not give it a little thumbs up that's good i really like that that's good feedback and if you didn't like it if you don't like my thoughts on things or um, the bikes or the harley davidson or whatever you can always give it a thumbs down but uh if you like bike you like bike don't you isn't that it we're too polarized these days so that you've got to love something or, or you must hate something you can't just go yeah whatever <laughs> Um, but yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down, I don't mind. Either way, it's cool, we're all cool in the school. Please do drop any comment though, like I said, um, uh, about uh, if you're up there and you found anything that I've missed mentioning, or um, if you uh, just had a different experience from me up there, um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Any houses, the traffic's not getting any better, so are you always safe? Take care, and I shall catch you all in the next one. Uh, bye bye for now. Hey, no, you gotta keep that bar. Rubber side down. <laughs>